I just uh, got back from about a 250 mile road trip uh, picking up a motorcycle that I just bought and it's April 2nd in Minnesota and as you can see uh, we've still got some snow on the ground so riding the motorcycle uh, home wasn't an option so uh, even though the roads were pretty clear we still got a lot of snow and the weather's a little chilly so I had to find a way to transport the motorcycle so I went on the internet and I was trying to figure out I had this nice trailer but uh, trying to find out the best way to secure the motorcycle into the trailer. Uh, a couple of things that I found were uh, was that a, a wheel chalk was recommended. And so I was looking on the internet at different wheel chocks and you can get them uh, for anywhere from about 20 bucks on up to a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so I was trying to figure out uh, the best way to secure that front wheel uh, from sliding and turning and so forth. And also, I was trying to figure out what the best anchor points were, how to, how to actually strap the motorcycle down so that it didn't do any damage to the motorcycle and kept it secure in the trailer. Uh, one of the recommendations was to use, they call it a soft strap, and basically it's a web strap that has loops sewn into each end. And that way you can just hook your ratchet straps, the metal hooks, uh, through the loops after you've looped them through, and you can kind of see that there. Uh, and they suggest... Uh, looping it around the fork just above that bottom uh, brace just above your shocks and uh, then securing uh, the ratchet straps to those soft straps and down to the anchor points on the trailer so you can see how that uh, worked there and uh, here in, I'll try and get a little better look underneath the cowling uh, how I wrapped it around the fork there but once you do that then they suggest that you uh, compress your shocks a little bit so that so if you hit some bumps and so forth it will uh, take uh, take the, the bounce out of your strap so you don't end up disengaging the hooks or whatever. So uh, I also, and then you also need to secure that rear tire and you can see the straps back there. I just did two straps and I wrapped it around the tire and went out to the side and tightened them up and that kept the back end from swinging around and kept it secure. There you can see underneath, uh, I just wrapped the strap around the thing. You got to make sure you avoid any wires or tubes or anything. Make sure you're just on the metal and then uh, go through the loop and then pull it down and then attach your uh, metal hook to the other loop and it worked really slick. It avoided uh, doing any, any damage or scraping of any, any uh, of the plastic or other parts on the motorcycle. And uh, by doing that, it just, uh, for the 250 miles, I never even had to uh, adjust it. I checked the straps a couple times, everything stayed tight. Uh, the wheel chock held everything really solid up there. And uh, yeah, I couldn't have asked for more that thing rock solid for the whole trip and I'm going to talk a little bit about the wheel chalk here uh, in a little bit what, uh, what how I came up with that design I looked at a number of uh, photos and so forth on the internet and tried to figure out the best way to hold the motorcycle uh, into that to keep it from uh, wobbling side to side or you know sliding or anything like that when you look at it without the motorcycle there, you can see at the front of the wheel chalk there's a long board and that's 54 inches long and I cut it longer because uh, you can see down at the bottom the two tie down loops uh, welded to the deck of the trailer. By cutting the board that long, that board fit right in between those two loops and that kept it from sliding uh, from e to either side. And then uh, the backboard uh, closest to you I wrapped some duct tape around that just to give a little extra grip to, you know, if it would vibrate or slide and that helped pretty good. But there you can see how the board is just uh, in between those two loops and that kept it from, from moving at all. And then I have uh, uh, the three foot board at the back of the thing. And then the two boards that run perpendicular between the front and the back, those are two feet long. And uh, my tire was a 17 inch tire by uh, 120 millimeters wide. 120 millimeters is about four and three quarters inches. So I measured that slot for the tire to go into uh, about four and three quarter inches and it fit in there very, very nicely. Uh, so anyway, I've got the, the 54 inch and then the three foot board, the two, uh, two foot boards that run perpendicular. And then uh, there's the two upright boards that run up, uh, up straight up and at the front of the trailer. Those are each about 12 or 13 inches long. And I, I put that brace board across the front of those just to you know make them a little more secure and then it could rest on the top of the trailer. So those two boards there, 24 inches each. Um, these upright boards, about a foot each, and you can, depending on the size of your tire and stuff, you could you know uh, play around with that a little bit. 
and then there's the little uh, brace board that's about seven and a half inches lo uh, long across the front of there. And then I've got the four uh, braces, as you can see. Those were just 12 inch long boards and I, I cut them 12 inches and then I put them on a miter saw and cut 45 degree angles off the ends of them and then just uh, put a, one screw at the top and one at the bottom and that anchored uh, those to the, uh, to the parts that I wanted to stabilize and uh, that worked really good. That little board in the middle, I stuck that in there thinking that would rest, the tire would rest on that a little more and give it a little more stability. Um, I don't know that I needed to do that, but uh, you can or you don't have to. Yours will probably be plenty stable uh, just using this design as it is. So 36 inch board, 24 inches, 54 inches, and then a couple of one footers going upright and then four one foot boards uh, as the braces and that little seven, seven and a half or whatever it is across the front. Um, like I said, it was four or three eight foot two by fours. And when I got all over and done with it, I had about a half of a board left over and uh, they cost, I think they were under two bucks a per, uh, per two by four. So yeah, I've got less than $6 into this. And then I threw, uh, I used two and a half inch screws uh, to screw everything together and it worked really good. So uh, if you think this is uh, something that you like, I, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, look at some of my other videos. I'm always trying to come up with solutions to uh, some of the everyday problems people uh, sometimes find uh, around their house or uh, as they're doing things and uh, hopefully you'll find something interesting. I'm going to pull this out of here and take a couple other shots from another angle uh, so you can maybe get a better idea of what it would take to put one of these together if you want to build one. I just to... Here it is uh, just sitting on the ground looking at it from the front you can see the you know how the uprights and the braces and everything and where the boards sit as far as uh, on top of each other and so forth. Um, just walking around it you can kind of see it from all angles. Once I figured out what the design was going to be it probably took me uh, about 45 minutes to just cut the boards and then screw everything together. It really uh, goes pretty slick and if I had had a video like this to help me um, it would have gone much faster than that even. So again hopefully uh, if, you, if you've learned anything here uh, subscribe to my channel like my videos I'd appreciate that and uh, thanks for watching.